Dave Long, who is in Salt Lake City, is going to start us off, and he says, hey, what are your early impressions of George Kirby's two-seamer? Does it seem like something that could be part of his arsenal going forward? Yeah, it's a pretty good pitch, I think. And, and it's a pitch that he's had but not used at the big league level or even really at the minor league level a whole lot. It's a pitch he had in college that he just didn't throw a lot. And, yeah, I think it's going to be part of his thing. I, I definitely do. Um, you know, like like a lot of things, a work in progress – but when you throw 95 to 100 miles an hour, and you can do that with two different kinds of fastball shape and movement, you do it. You do it, and you don't blink about making that decision. And he commands it, and he showed it the other day. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty good pitch. Uh, Paul, by the way, Paul McMillan says, hey, can you talk about and grade the two-seamer from Kirby? Uh, I'd give it a 50, 55 at this point, but I'd project it to at least a 55 regularly, at least, if not significantly better than that. He is a guy with, uh, I remember when Brett Anderson was drafted. What year was that? Um, I'm going to look it up when Brett Anderson was drafted. You guys know, Brandon, the lefty been around for a while. Maybe he retired. I don't know. He was hanging around last time. I thought, uh, yeah, he's not, he hasn't pitched so far this year, at least at the big league level, spent the last two seasons in Milwaukee, 34 years old, out of Midland, Texas. He was a second-round pick by the Diamondbacks. The word used to describe Brett Anderson, and you'll probably remember him most because of all of his years in Oakland. I think he spent five or six years in Oakland. The, the word used on draft day was pitchability. Like, he's a pitchability left-hander. That means there's not a whole lot of stuff there. Now, Anderson improved his stuff, got to the big leagues, low 90s when he was at his best. He was throwing 93, 94. Uh, that's, that's not ordinary from a lefty, at least in 2009, 2010, 2011. It wasn't ordinary. George Kirby, while he's not a pitchability anything, has a ton of pitchability, which, which means he learns pitches quickly, has a lot of different pitches, commands them, like, that's a pitch of like, knows how to use them. That's George Kirby. He just so happens to throw 100 miles an hour also. So I would feel, I certainly do, if I were you as a fan of this baseball team, I would feel really confident in George Kirby having two fastballs, um, having a an above-average slider, an above-average curveball, an above-average changeup. George Kirby is this club's best organic shot at an ace. As much as I like Logan Gilbert, George Kirby is this club's best shot at an ace. Now they can go out and buy one uh, right now. Robbie Ray is still very much in that mix, but George Kirby's that guy. Pound the strike zone with 95 to 100, two-seamer, four-seamer, curveball, slider, changeup, legit five-pitch guy that throws strikes with all five? I mean, get out of here, right? Forget about it, as New Yorkers would say. So, yeah, I'd say it's at least average already. And the more he uses it, the more he throws it, you know, over the years, the better it's going to get. I imagine he hangs on to it. But I imagine he hangs on to the four-seamer, too, because when you can throw that hard, you want that kind of shape, if, if you can. But there have been power pitchers that have gone primarily to the two-seamer despite the fact they throw 97. Hey, it's Jason Churchill. To get the full episode, as well as every other episode of the podcast, past and future, subscribe for as little as $5 per month by going to bit.ly slash get the pod. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash get the pod, all one word, a link you can also find on my Twitter profile. Hey, thanks for checking out Baseball Things. Baseball Things.